WWE SmackDown season premiere was supposed to set the stage for upcoming episodes, unfortunately, it wasn't the best first impression, there were several points during the two-hour broadcast that felt like they dragged on and on and on unto infinity, yes, the two-hour-long WWE SmackDown show felt like a three-hour episode of Raw, when it comes to the overall WWE product, it becomes clear that there are certain stars that they are invested in. A lot of time and effort is spent on making their segments stand out. The rest of WWE SmackDown, and Raw for that matter, is just filler most weeks. The Queen's Crown Tournament is an afterthought. You're welcome to agree or disagree in the comments below. Feel free to share your opinions with us. Number 3, Best and Worst, a big WWE SmackDown win for Zelina Vega at the cost of Tony Storm. Having Zelina Vega beat Tony Storm was certainly a bold move. It's not a bad decision per se, but has Storm done anything of note since she came to the blue brand? It's also extremely weird to see a Zelina Vega vs Carmella match considering that both of the women are heels. One has to hope that next week's match Queen's Crown match on WWE SmackDown will get enough time. The women were hardly allowed to tell a story during their matches this week. If this is the trend going forward will the audience care about the eventual winner at all? As for Tony Storm, one has to hope that there are some plans for her, in some capacity. Not only does she look great, she's incredible between the ropes too, when she's given enough time, that is, number 2, best. WWE SmackDown closes out with a bang, there's nobody on the WWE SmackDown roster or Raw or NXT for that matter, that's as expressive as Edge. When the familiar strains of Alter Bridge accompanied the rated R superstar to the ring, you could see him fuming. Seth Rollins' actions from the week prior, where he invaded Edge's home had clearly gotten under his skin. The Hell in a Cell stipulation also makes sense because this is their third tryst. Number 2 Worst, the Liv Morgan situation. This is not a knock at Carmella, who's clearly very talented, but at the same time, she's done it all and been at the mountaintop. A tournament like the Queen's Crown would have done wonders for Liv Morgan, who the company seems high on at times. She's relegated to the background the following week. Yes, the WWE SmackDown match between Carmella and Liv Morgan lasted for the blink of an eye, and yes, the wrong woman won. What do you guys think of Carmella's face mask? Are you fans of the gimmick? Number 1, Best, Sonya Deville to return to action once again. Next week's episode of WWE SmackDown is guaranteed to be a loaded affair. One of the highlights is certainly Sonya Deville's return to the ring after a long period of absence. As good as she has been as an on-screen authority figure, Sonya Deville is far too talented to be relegated to such a role. The WWE SmackDown women's roster really needs a star like her to make things more interesting as well. Number 1 Worst, The WWE SmackDown Low Point. The objective of every heel is to get the crowd to hate them. Someone like MJF can cut promos that hit close to home and get under the skin of the crowd. In such a situation, fans want to see the heel get destroyed by the babyface. Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss just make you switch WWE SmackDown off and watch just about anything else. This gimmick is clearly not working and poor Kevin Owens is caught in the middle in a feud that is doing nobody any favors at all. In an interview with ET Online, The Undertaker revealed that a return of the dead man to a WWE ring is simply not going to happen. My days in the ring are done, it's not because I don't want to be in the ring, and that is where I spent most of my adult life. My whole life really, more than half my life has been spent in the sports entertainment ring, so in my mind, I can still see everything. In my heart, you know I want to be out there, but it's at a point where my body just can't deliver, and I don't want to cheapen the legacy of that character. I'd hate for people to pay money to see me work and be disappointed. The Undertaker's last match in WWE was his Boneyard match against AJ Styles, it was a cinematic bout that served as the main event of night one of WrestleMania 36. The Undertaker would win the match by tossing Styles into a grave and burying him. The match was widely regarded as one of the best matches of WrestleMania weekend, and won the WWE Slammy Award for Match of the Year. While the COVID-19 pandemic forced WWE to radically change plans, fans almost seemed to prefer this type of match for the aging veteran. WWE was able to hide his limitations and showcase all the coolest features of The Undertaker's character. Many fans also believed that the image of The Undertaker riding off into the sunset on his motorcycle was a sign of Taker's retirement from wrestling. In the summer of 2020, WWE released the series The Last Ride, a play off the ESPN documentary The Last Dance about Michael Jordan, marking The Undertaker as the GOAT of WWE. In the series, The Undertaker covered nearly every facet of his career in wrestling and discussed all of his highs and lows. The series included never-before-seen backstage footage of The Undertaker after significant matches in his career, including matches with Brock Lesnar, Triple H, Shawn Michaels and many more. On the final episode of The Last Ride, The Undertaker revealed that he had officially retired from in-ring competition, with Taker's loyal to Vince McMahon well documented. It can be almost confirmed that The Undertaker will never wrestle outside WWE.
Netflix is known for having interactive choose-your-own destiny specials, where the viewer gets to make decisions for the characters on screen. The latest and hottest special out right now is Escape the Undertaker, which debuted on Netflix last week. The plot features The Undertaker and The New Day, as the dead man challenges the fearless unicorn warriors to escape his castle and retrieve the legendary urn. WWE SmackDown star Top Dalla of the Hit Row faction recently said he was ready to face Roman Reigns and take a spear from the Universal Champion. NXT faction Hit Row was recently drafted to SmackDown. Before and after the WWE draft, various members of WWE met at Jimmy's Famous Seafood. Their Top Dalla ran into Roman Reigns. In his recent appearance on the Jobbing Out podcast, Top Dalla, whose real name is AJ Francis, said he told Reigns that he can take the spear well at the restaurant, and that's not even a tenth of what I'm capable of in that light, so it's like to understand that I can get so much out of so little makes me recognize that when I get an opportunity against a Roman Reigns, of what I can really break out and show people about my ability, look man, I've told Roman Reigns this. I told Roman this when I saw him at Jimmy's, famous seafood, after the draft, I told him, I take one hell of a spear, said Top Dalla. The former NXT star says WWE fans haven't seen what he is truly capable of in the ring, promising more athleticism and agility in the blue brand, as mentioned earlier, Hit Row was drawn to the blue brand from the NXT brand. The group of Top Dollar, Isaiah Swerve Scott, Ashante the Adonis, and B-Fab, was drafted on night one of the 2021 WWE draft as SmackDown's number 6 pick. The draft picks come into effect on October 22 following Crown Jewel pay-per-view so Hit Row could still make another appearance on NXT. Swerve is still the NXT North American champion. This means that he will likely lose the NXT exclusive title before moving to SmackDown. Are you excited to see Hit Row coming to WWE SmackDown? Who do you think they should feud with? Let us know in the comments section below. Roman Reigns will take on Brock Lesnar at the Crown Jewel Show on October 21, 2021. The Universal Championship will be on the line as the two behemoths face each other in Saudi Arabia. The current reported plan indicates that their upcoming clash won't just be a one-off. The Beast Incarnate made his return to WWE at SummerSlam and had a face-off with Reigns, as per previous reports. Lesnar was brought back ahead of schedule in order to compete with CM Punk joining AEW. Originally, Lesnar vs. Reigns was set for WrestleMania 38. Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter has noted that the current plan is for Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar to have a prolonged feud, right now the plan is to get a lot more time out of Lesnar vs. Reigns than just the Saudi Arabia show, and from the rosters, they need to do that, McIntyre is there, but they also have to elevate other people, stated Meltzer. Meltzer added that WWE could put the Universal Championship on Brock Lesnar in order to keep his feud against Roman Reigns interesting for a long period of time, the storied rivalry between both men has led to multiple clashes between them, however, the dynamics have changed a bit this time as the Beast Incarnate is a babyface while Reigns is the heel. Another important change is that Lesnar's trusted advocate, Paul Heyman, will be in the corner of the Tribal Chief. Many fans expect a major swerve from Heyman during the match. As a result, he could turn on his Tribal Chief helping Lesnar become the next Universal Champion. Would you like to see this twist happen at Crown Jewel 2021? Let us know in the comments section below.